Next up is a product that is good for your body and the planet. My name is Dr. Stacy Whitman. I'm a board certified pediatric dentist from Portland, Oregon, and I'm here today seeking $200,000 for 10% equity. I'm sure you floss daily, and you should, because cavities and gum disease are two of the most chronic diseases globally. <laughs> oh my God. This is only 3,000 flossers repurposed from my dental office. If you use single-use plastic, you will create nearly 30,000 pieces of trash in your lifetime. These plastic flossers will take nearly 400 years or more to break down, if they ever do, potentially releasing plastics, microtoxins, and microplastics into our soil, oceans, and eventually our bodies. Happy Floss is the world's first flosser designed for true compostability. It's made of layers of post-consumer recycled paper, making it bio to super Dr. Stacy Whitman. Woo! Welcome, Stacy. How are you doing today? Hey, Joe. I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm I'm happy that you were able to. We we're both able to make it work, and I'm yeah. I'm excited to. I just got done rewatching your pitch, uh, which I don't always get to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have lots of questions because it did not go as you, as I think you or anybody watching it who cares about the environment as uh, I think I made pretty clear I do care about the environment uh, in in my review of the pitch and and it's it's funny like I actually texted a friend um, while I was at the dentist I was so I, I had to, I was at my kids dentist uh, today and then my life my wife left my life my wife left that to go to her dentist uh, while we were there for that and then here I am talking with the dentist so uh it's, it's a dentite day for you it all is about the teeth. Yep. it is all about to be in fact i brushed my teeth right before coming down here to speak with you because i figured Wonderful. um it was a great reminder that i should probably <laughs> do so um so can i just say something first before we yeah. go and i just want to say thank you for your recap of my episode because it really meant a lot my husband found it um, and he forwarded it to me and he said, look, this guy gets it. Like he was supportive because obviously, yes, I will, will, will get into it, but it didn't go as I expected. I knew they were going to be hard on me, but you know, when you're up there, it's, it's pretty intense. Uh, so anyway, I just want to thank you oh, you for, are so welcome. Uh, just your kindness and, and kind of getting it getting my bigger message and getting the bigger picture of why I was on that show to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. I, so let's, let's jump right into how you were feeling walking down that hallway. Oh, I was going to die. <laughs> I mean, I was so nervous. So it was funny. I think I was overconfident because I grew up a theater kid and uh, I was terrified. I mean, I was really nervous. I, uh, it's hard to explain. I also, you know, they bring you to the studio and you don't really know when you're going to go on. Mm -hmm. And let's just say I waited a long time. So they were already like over the day. They to were looking at their watches, waiting for their jets to pick them up, to whisk away. It was the end of the... Uh, video session for that time period to oh wow uh, we, I mean listen I get it it was a pre-sale prototype they don't like those I was already setting myself up for um, you know an, a shark attack if you will but they did seem a little distracted and like let's get out of here that's that was the vibe I got but I was very nervous so um I kind of black, like, you know, when you like brown out, I don't know if you've done public speaking, but oh, yeah. you, you speak and then you're done and people are applauding and you say, wait, what, what just happened? Did I do okay? That's how I felt. Uh, so anyway, yeah. No, that's a, that's a, I mean, what public speaking is like the number one feared thing by the public. Um, yeah. you know, next to like death, death is like a second, <laughs> it's like second, yeah. uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, and I've done a lot of it, to be honest, I lecture and, you know, I have a social media following and so I'm sort of used to being in front of the camera, but when those doors open and you see Kevin sitting there scowling at you, 
I mean, it's intense. It's really intense. And obviously, to you, you know, we can talk about this more, but Mark Cuban brought up the point, but you're just a dentist, you know, and it's true. I mean, I am a business owner. Obviously, I own a small business, so that was frustrating. But, and you brought that up too, so thank you for that. You're I've so owned welcome. for a decade, and I'd like to say it's quite successful. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's intense. And then you look over and it's Mark Cuban and it's, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in all at once. So anyway, I admire anyone who goes up there and just totally crushes it. It is, it is a, a lot of pressure uh, on, you know, on you to be, to be there and to do, you know, to, to well, there's a lot of pressure prior to all that with all the process that you're going through, the gauntlet of of everything, uh, Shark Tank related, on top of your business, on top of getting this off the ground. Um, and yeah, I I was not uh I was none too pleased about the that that hey, you know, you're you're not you're just you're not a business owner. Like you're you you do not have the business shops. Yeah, uh, is what I said. Which I mean, how long so how long were you actually out there for? Because I have no idea. Was it like 20 minutes or like I would guess it, had, it, it could not have been prob- 45? No, probably 30. Okay. I mean, they definitely edited a lot out. Let me mm. put it that way. And I will say to the way it was cut in certain ways, I wasn't very pleased with. Um, but it's a show, right? Um, and I know that, but yeah, I mean, it was hard. And once, when someone starts saying things like that to you, it's pretty hard to get, when Mark Cuban says to you, you don't have business shops. I mean, it's pretty hard to recover from that. So it was hard, but I took it with, you know, I took it in stride and I tried, tried to keep telling myself, what is my bigger message here? And it was obviously, exposure but also just emphasizing the importance of sustainability and you know i do believe we need to be investing in our future and our children's future and the future of our planet and that may mean taking some risks with investments and some risks with startups and you know shark tank to me has shifted a little bit where they really are becoming more supportive of already very well established successful entities and i it would be cool if there was a show that really helps the bootstrappy little guys you know and that is why i went out there i mean i was i'm really looking or what you know we we can talk about that too but i went out looking for manufacturing help manufacturing partners that's the heavy lift right now with happy floss is that it truly is as far as i know the world's first truly compostable sustainable floss pick Um, It's made of post-consumer recycled paper. Everything in it breaks down. Our compostability and degradation tests are showing it breaks down in under three months um, completely. In a compostable setting or just if you just chuck it in the trash? Compost, Ben. Compost, okay. But, you know, it's paper and and it has cassava root adhesive in it and it's silk floss. Um, And so traditional plastic flossers can take 400 years plus if they ever degrade and then there are bioplastic flossers and this is what i want wish i had more opportunity to explain to the sharks but most bioplastic flossers are not truly compostable or biodegradable they're they're mixed with regular plastic um so it's a lot of greenwashing and so true sustainability experts which i have interviewed ample ample people in this space they actually hate bioplastic flossers because they break down faster and they release microplastics faster into the environment, if that makes sense. So they're mixing regular plastic with a bioplastic. And so the bacteria, they they break down that bioplastic, which releases the petroleum-based plastic faster into the environment. Um, so I, you know, my my whole passion is that we can do better in this in this space. And um, my preliminary market research shows this is, you know, floss picks specifically are a $600 million industry and soon to be projections. I believe it's by 2030 an 800 billion, uh, sorry, million, $800 million industry. So there's a huge business opportunity here and I have the IP. Um, we're still meeting with the examiner, fine tuning things for my patents, but it's, looking really good and I'll have patents in the US and Canada and Europe. Um, 
Yeah. And Lori brought that up. Um, and honestly, you know, they had, they all made good, great points. You know, do I want to be running a floss pit company? I am moving out of clinical dentistry. I am in very interested in product development. I actually have other products in the works. Um, but I didn't have an opportunity to explain that because they just were kind of, you know, honed in on who I was and what I was after. What I didn't anticipate, I feel like I had prepared way up here for the questions. And my a lot of this was edited out, but a lot of the questions were literally about why we floss <laughs> and why are we flossing kids' teeth and what, you know, what is a floss pick? So that a lot of that was out of the segment. Um, so again, I was thrown off a little bit by realizing, oh, okay, I need to actually explain the product more. I, I kind of went out assuming everybody knew what a floss pick was and why we use it and who uses it and why it's important to floss. But I kind of had to start explaining some of those things. Mm. Um, that's that's pretty that's pretty fascinating that uh that's where they they wanted to go i know uh when don o'don was on the show like two seasons ago he's like yeah i spent like 30 or 40 minutes just talking about that they just had questions about dinosaurs like they just yeah. they kept asking so like but it was like 30 40 minutes before he even really got to talk about the business they just yeah. talk about that they were like kids up there talking about dinosaurs yeah and then i think i insulted <laughs> uh daniel because he was asking why are cavities increasing in kids. Um, he's the founder of the Kind Bar. And I said, because oh, this is what I say all the time. <laughs> you see where this is going. I do, I do. I'm on podcasts and interviews all the time, and I just have it up here, right? And I say, well, that's a great question. It's because our food has changed, and we're eating more ultra-processed foods. And, you know, kids are eating more goldfish crackers and chips and pretzels and granola bars. And I looked right at him, and you could just, I mean, anyway, foot and mouth. So, but it's been great. I mean, I, my inbox was bombarded um, after it aired uh, of, you know, let's say I got a thousand emails, probably 90% were garbage, but there have been, I have, I'm in negotiations potentially with selling the IP, getting manufacturing partners. There are people interested, um, which is really cool. So it kind of, you know, it did what it was supposed to do it's hard not to get your ego involved. You obviously want to deal for optics and for ego points. Um, I don't think a shark deal ultimately was the right choice for my business per se. And I think they just didn't get it. And of course, I didn't have sales to back it up. So not interested. I mean, I understand that. Yeah, the sales thing definitely puts a damper on it. But you know, it's it, you. You went in looking for two hundred thousand for ten percent, which is not. Mm -hmm. a, I mean, it's it's like right up against mm -hmm. like the high mark for deals, like to yeah. to, to get like the progressively le the high. You know, higher you go from there, the less you're likely to get yes. a deal. Um, so you're 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 right there, and um, I, I I think that when it comes to well, I'm glad your your utility patent is is getting close, uh, yeah. and I think it's awesome that you're looking to step away from you know clinical, uh, you know the day to day uh, dentistry. Is do you have something? Is there do you, like and you don't have to get into it, but is there something else in the back of your mind that you're like, if this were to sell, do you mm -hmm. have something else like yeah. that you want to go down? Yeah, I have another product launch this fall that is Woo! really happening. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I can't really talk about it yet. No, and that's fine. We, we I to totally big, understand that. The big announcement for my, you know, I, I am fairly present on social media. So I have very dedicated followers um, who will be very excited about this product launch, I think. Uh, so I kind of have to wait for, for the timing to be better. But that really is happening. Um, so that's exciting and I'm working on courses and I'm lecturing more. So I'm sort of creating more of a digital brand, if you will. I have a book coming out. I have a cookbook coming out. Um, and these were all things I thought maybe they'd ask more about me and they didn't. So again, my ego got in the way. Uh, so it's all good. It was humbling. 
It, it, well, yes, that that it is. And, you know, look, not every um, – well, I, I'm kind of curious as to um, how did you wind up – did you reach out – did you apply to be on Shark Tank or did Shark Tank yeah. find you? <laughs> okay. Uh, I – yeah, I mean, literally friends said, oh, my gosh, you should be on Shark Tank. And I said, really? You think? I don't even have sales. They said, oh, like, just look into it. So I looked into it. I filled out the preliminary. I mean, it's like two line application. Um, and then I got called. I don't know. It might have been six months after I submitted the initial application. And I went through a series of interviews and I didn't get a call back. So this was for the previous season. Uh. And then I said, well, tried it almost made it like I had to do a video and everything. So I almost made it, um, but it wasn't a good fit for that season. And then they cold called me for the next season and said, you're a better fit for this season. So I encourage everyone out there to, to apply. It can't. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Know. Yeah. You don't know. That's until you get nothing. If you don't ask, right? Yeah. Just try. Um, and I, I would say it was a really great experience. You work with the producers are lovely. I mean, it, it was cool. It just, it was intense. The sharks mean business and I'm, I, I'm a fan, but I'm not a super fan. And I almost obsessively watched episodes and studied it. And I probably should have, but I didn't do that. I decided to go out a little, a little blind. Um, I mean, obviously I prepped a lot, but I mean, I didn't watch 3000 episodes and take notes and have spreadsheets and all of that. But as for my ask, I mean, I, I did have many, I've had many consultants. I have a, a marketing partner who is a CMO for many wonderful startups. And that was part of a frustrating part of the segment was when I was asked about my marketing plan. And, you know, I said, oh, I basically I was like, oh, I don't have one. And that's not true. I have a marketing plan and I have uh, someone very experienced in marketing helping me. Um, so but I didn't really have a great opportunity to explain that, or at least you didn't get to see that part. You know, look, they're there to tell a story, right? And when when I always say like this, you know, you start with how the how it ends and then work backwards from there mm -hmm. to get to that ending. And, you know, obviously there's different paths that it can take and there's things they're going to cut out because it just doesn't serve the yeah. ending. You know, they could have been super pot. They could have, I mean, I've heard, we've heard stories here where, the, you know, they're standing there clapping, blah, 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 blah. But then nobody actually gives an offer. And that's exactly how how it shows is is that like well so and so said a little bit of this and a little bit of that it didn't show Mark standing there you know standing up yeah. and clapping and giving an applause that's the the difficult part about giving up that that creative uh, license to to what you what happened out there. Um, with that said, did you have a shark in mind going into it? I think it was Mark originally, but mostly just because I. I'm like, I'm a big fan of his and especially what he's doing with the pharmaceutical industry. Mm. In hindsight, that was a poor choice because he doesn't generally like, uh, it seems, things in the health and wellness space. Um, I think, you know, again, some of this was edited out, but Lori was very supportive and she was very kind. Um, and I think if I had patents secured, we might have had a conversation. And then Damon also... Um, at the end of it, I was just trying to create a good show. And so I said, you know, what will it take sharks? You know, I did that whole song and dance. Like, I just want this to be out in the world. You know, I that's why I'm doing this. What percentage of partnership will it take? And Damon kind of perked up and then eventually said, nah, you know, I'm not going to take your business from you. But, so you know, it was entertaining at, at least. I, I walked out though and I, I either wanted to like punch a wall or start crying. Um, and then they do the post interview and uh, it was, you know, it was intense. But again, perspective, I then flew back home and opened my email over the next week and it was wonderful. And a lot of people reach out with support, um, and I think you mentioned this too, just saying, especially what Kevin said, I received so many messages from other dentists or other entrepreneurs in, in the dental space who said, 
holy guacamole, Kevin had no idea what he was talking about. This is not for one of the big three dental industries. This isn't Henry Shine or Patterson or Ben Co. This is a direct to consumer product. You know, and I even had my Henry Shine rep from my office say, what is he talking about? We're not going to make this product for you. We don't do that. We don't do this stuff. So anyway, I, I could have done better explaining it. Um, hindsight, you know, I, I re I can't rewatch it. I've only rewatched it a couple of times cause it, it's a little hard for me to watch, but, uh, I think I could have explained it better. I did stand up to Kevin, which again, the viewer didn't quite get to see all of that, but I did try and correct him. Um, but he wasn't having it. So, yeah, you know, they, um, they have an image to uh, protect sure. as well, and sure. it, yeah. which you know, it, it is, it, it's one of the reasons why, like, you know, people watch, that watch, the, well, this channel or or the show in general, like, there's a lot of people out there that are just like they just take the side of the shark, and it's like, oh, well, they obviously they know they have billions of dollars. It's like, well, hold on, first off, only one of them has billions of dollars. Yeah. Two, if you count Thank Peter, you, you know, mm -hmm. so like know your facts first, right? Like don't, you know, not that, again, money is not the most important thing, period, but um, they're not all billionaires and they do get things wrong. Ring is a huge, yeah, a huge example of that, right? On, on, a, on a massive scale. Uh, Uber is another uh, one that, that just, you know, well, I would they didn't love get right. In five years, we say, and they got happy floss wrong. I mean, that would be cool. We'll see. Yeah. No, uh, I, I, I hope so, too, because the, the microplastics thing, I mean, I don't think that can be hone, uh, honed in enough on. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I remember like 10, 15 years ago reading like, art, you know, I'd read articles, tech articles and stuff and talking like, you know, you ingest like one or two credit cards a year or three credit cards a year. And that was like 15 to 20. And like, it's only been like 20 years later, you know, yeah. 15, 20 years later. Like, what the heck is happening yeah, here? They're finding microplastics in newborn babies, in placentas. And from my standpoint, we know microplastics actually affect dent uh, enamel formation of teeth, mm. hormone disruption. It's a big deal. And so it is true. You're like looking at this little floss, you're like, this is silly. But it reminds me of like post-it notes or, you know, just something that seems so mundane and simple, simple but it can really have a profound impact. I mean, I it's we throw away 4.7 billion floss picks in I mean, North I, America annually. This was a great example I feel that you you know uh, demonstration. It, it gives me the um the gumball vibes from um that that Adam Sandler movie uh bedtime Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was also I mean, it 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 looked beautiful. I was so nervous for this because, you know, you fly down and you it's not like you get a lot of time to prep. You really don't. And so I did a couple of run throughs and the umbrella was sticking. It wouldn't open. And I was <laughs> dying. I was dying. And they, they you know, they're like, oh, it's going to be OK. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just take a deep breath. And I'm like, I, I can take a deep breath. But if it physically doesn't open, what am I going to do? You know, they got a made for TV so, moment right there. I was so nervous <laughs> just about the damn umbrella. You know what I mean? Before <laughs> I even started, but the optics look good. I mean, it did. It did look good, and it's probably why. You know, I, they they I, they could have cut my segment, and I maybe couldn't have even aired. So I should be very appreciative that I even made it to the big screen, which I'm very thankful for. Yeah. No. I look. I I totally get. Um, having that um experience of like a lot of people are going to see this and it's not going to be shown in the right light and it's not going to be shown you know yeah. like as a as a win you know not just for you but for like everybody in like might just talked about the microplastics thing right as a as another win for for that so um so I and I've been I've been um, we there's a video of me that has like two million views. It's a Shark Tank video, but they're yeah. making fun of me in the video. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's like ah, you know. But I've gotten quite a few subscribers and supporters through it. So it's yeah. like ah, you know, big it's picture. whatever. Yeah, big I picture. Mean, I like doesn't matter. It's the risk you take by putting yourself out there, 
And I'm a big believer if you don't put yourself out there and if you don't try, then you'll never know. And I think the difference between many people who are successful or experts in their field, et cetera, is that they just tr they just do it. They just put themselves out there and they try and they take risks. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I mean, in, I, I'm happy in hindsight. I don't know if I'd ever do it again. Um, <laughs> it's very, it was intense for our family too, because there's just a lot of prep work and things that go into it. Um, I had my husband, we had like, you know, postcards and he was like grilling me all these high level stats and I was memorizing my pitch deck. And again, none of that was asked. Zero. It was more like, wait, what? Why do we floss? <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Anyway. Hey, look, yeah. uh, they say everybody's got a plan until you get uh, flossed in the teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right. So, that, I mean, that is, it, it is tough. I mean, you have um, children as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So like balancing that with your business and all, what what's some of the things that you did to balance that whole gauntlet of Shark Tank on top of trying to get this off the ground as well yeah. as, you know, the day-to-day -day operations of owning a business? Yeah, I mean. With, I think... with zero business chops. Just I know. throwing it out there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It'd be one thing if I was an associate or something, but in the thing, you didn't even ask. I'm like, well, if a small business owner. So I was going to ask about that I because mean, it didn't seem like you were out there very long. I mean, comparatively speaking. Um, and and so, like, I was curious as to what they what was said that didn't get said. They never asked anything about me, really. It was wild. A little bit. Huh. I mean, Lori asked me, tell us about you and where you kind of your where you came from and your history. And I explained some of that, but not in my there weren't many follow up questions. It was uh. like, oh, OK, OK, cool, cool, cool. So like, let's get into the numbers. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I mean, I opened my office in 2015. Um, I do have a little bit a unique practice model. We take a whole body approach. I'm obviously very into sustainability. Um, that's really important in my practice too. Um, I'm being approached about potentially franchising my practice model or opening other offices throughout the country. So in your face, Mark Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do get what he's... I. I try to take my a step back and I do get what they mean. But what was frustrating to me about that is people have to start somewhere. I mean, I understand you're they're not out there to be mentors, but they have huge teams. And I, again, I just wish I hope the producers are having meetings saying, you know what, we should do a Shark Tank knockoff that is where we take someone under our wing and help them more than these people coming out with already 10 million in sales, 40 million in sales, asking for more cash. I just think, I mean, no offense. I think it's jump the shark. I think it's just not as interesting as helping out someone who's a little scrappy. Well, so, all right, a couple things there. One, I think that, um, the power of what Mark said, like how many people took what he said at face value and then didn't email you about at all because they're like, Oh, Mark's Mark, clearly Mark knows what he's talking about. So like, she doesn't, she doesn't know what she's talking about. So, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to pass. Right. But even if it's just one, just one person takes that and that one person could change everything yeah. for you. Totally. That and that's is all I need. I did, it's not even to launch this company. It's not going to take that much money when you are speaking to someone who's very wealthy, you know, like Richard Branson, who is collaborating with Grove Collaborative, which is a sustainable, not anti-plastic company. I mean, the amount of money I need Richard Branson makes in interest as we are talking. So I hear you. I do hear you. I will say, I think that most people said they came across looking like jerks. Now, these are my fans and my <laughs> my friends and family. So I don't know. I don't know what other people said, but, um, you know, it's OK. No, I, and I, I think so. I think so, too. And I think that that um, 
you know, we can't control what other people think or say. We we can control how we react and how we we take it from there. And um and and yeah, that's it's a, like I said, it's unfortunate because there might be people that that would take it at face value. Though, with that said, I'm a, a probably a healthy percentage of them are people you probably wouldn't want to work with anyway, um, because they're taking something that's like mm-hmm. a snippet of a TV show and yeah. Just yeah, moving on with it, right? I do agree, though. Um, the the idea of what you're you're saying, though, uh, I mean, kind of was done with Beyond the Tank, and we only got two seasons of that. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, so it was it was basically taking like their update, like the little snippet update in the episode, yeah. and like expanding an hour long episode of oh. like in more in depth. I I kind of yeah. want to do something. I have all the episodes. Um, I kind of want to do something with it on the channel, but I, I don't know. It's, it, it's not going to probably get nearly as much, you know, views or whatever as yeah, I mean, uh, for the time investment. They're producing a show. And unfortunately, as a society and a species, we like to see people squirm. And we like to see people uh, brought down, you know. And, and I was that little segment of that episode. And, you know, I'll take it. Look, I, I think the, the funniest thing before Apple uh, unveiled the uh, the Vision Pro, right? The, the most innovative thing they had come up with was a TV show where people are nice to each other in Ted Lasso. Oh. So, so it's like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, do, I, I mean, I mostly like it a lot. Like, I'm not a big fan of TV shows in general. But yeah, I mean, it really, it really, uh, you know, for the most part, the first season was amazing, like pretty amazing. Second season was uh, pretty good. And third, you know, I haven't finished yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the last episode. Okay. I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm getting, I'm getting, with two young kids at home. It's so hard to get, and, and it's summertime now. So I can't like, hey, you got to go to school tomorrow. So you, you really got to go to bed. It's really tough. Um, so, okay. So once you got back from Shark Tank, uh, yeah. back back home in, in Portland, right? <laughs> yes, Portland. Um, and so what what was some of the things that you did to potentially air on Shark Tank? Like to, to prepare the business because, well, the business that was still budding and like. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, I mean, I kept, we kept. I kept trying to pitch people and raise money um, and investors. We're just trying to decide what direction to go in. I kept working with my patent attorneys to get the patent secured, but they don't tell you you're airing. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's only three weeks. A blink of it. It was less for me. A blink of an eye, um, which it was for me. It was fine because I don't have sales. Like it wasn't like I had to get my website ready for this big crash. Um, but we did some marketing media strategy type stuff and, you know, how to promote it that way. And, um, some PR things, I did get some podcasts out of it and some interviews. I'm still working on maybe some bigger interviews actually. Uh, we'll see. So, you know, some people did get exposed to me. Um, but that's kind of it. I mean, I, again, I'm in talks and, pretty darn close to negotiations with a couple groups who are interested in the IP. We have a handful of manufacturing partners that are interested. So that's if I didn't want to sell the IP and collect royalties, if I did want to run this business, what would that look like? Um, The concern is, you know, even with patents and NDAs and all this stuff, people can still kind of take your idea. And that's where I'm a little nervous. Mm. Uh, And I don't know, I've just heard some horror stories. And, you know, I don't necessarily have, I'm not this big behemoth of a company that has all this money to pay attorneys to go after people for infringing on my patent or my IP right now. So I'm trying to be very thoughtful with who I share the process with because it truly is one of a kind and that's why we need custom machinery because these have never been made before on planet earth you know a paper flosser unless someone can prove me wrong show it to me but i i don't believe there have been any flossers made out of paper what's interesting i didn't get to share this part of the story but i got the idea i was walking on a beach in hawaii i think i think this was on the segment and I looked down at the water. It might have been cut. 
Um, at the, I looked out at the shoreline. There was so much trash in the marina. And I looked closer and there were all these floss picks. Now, who knows? Somebody threw a bag of floss picks over the never side. Know, oh, never know. <laughs> they, really they knew you were coming. <laughs> they knew you were coming, Stacey. They were like. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm appreciative of them in a weird way because I thought, gosh. And I was, remember, I was sitting in my lecture because I was there at a conference. I wasn't paying any attention because I was just thinking, oh, my gosh. Are there sustainable floss picks out there um and if so why aren't we talking about that more maybe i should use them at my office but you know wheel spinning and then it was right around the time the plastic straw movement was happening the no plastic straws um which was big here in portland and on the west coast and so everybody started using paper straws or metal straws um and so i thought gosh paper sounds cool um, and then a friend sent me a straw made out of pasta that they had in Italy. And I thought, gosh, pasta's neat. So we actually started the concept, or I did, as it was going to be called Pasta Floss. And they were going to be made out of pasta. And I took a pasta pr preparation class, and I was in my kitchen trying to make floss picks out of pasta. And big surprise, it didn't work. <laughs> so uh i then met with a patent attorney and this is funny this does show how i really didn't know what i was doing but i was very confident and i met with a patent attorney um i just googled best patent attorney in portland and i went i had a meeting and i said i'm here to patent a paper flosser and he said okay cool give me the design give me more information and i just was like yeah i don't have that and so he said, okay, lady, you're way ahead of your time. We, you need a lot more before we can start a patent process, but let me connect you with this guy down the street who's not only a manufacturer, but he's a sustainability expert. And that is who I worked with for the, these iterations of Happy Floss. Um, and he's a, he's a genius and he's very passionate about sustainability. And so he and I worked together to create not only the design and we handmade them, but he has the blueprint, if you will, for the machinery. Um, and then he presented with me what the machinery would cost. And I said, oh, OK, I don't think <laughs> I don't think I can keep bootstrapping this one. My husband will absolutely murder me. Um, so I need to start looking for investors or someone that is interested in helping out um and so that's where we're at but i mean it's we'll see i think it can go in many different directions but i'm actually pretty hopeful about some of the ip movement that's happening right now and especially with my other company launching in the fall that might be a good move for me as to just um sell the the patents and get royalties i what i'm very concerned with though is that it will lose this authenticity and integrity. You know, all you have to do is just add a little bit of plastic in there or just make it a little bit less sustainable. And then it just kind of loses all of its magic because the, the idea is that it's fully, it, you can, it will fully break down um, in the earth, which I think is very important. Ding, ding. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ding, ding. Absolutely. Uh, it, yeah. In a, in a reasonable amount of time for yeah, you know, 400 and without, months. Three months. I, we some some of the samples were six months, but a majority were three months. So we're seeing three to six months. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I feel guilty every time I use any single plastic thing. I we I I still do, but like yep. I, 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 it's hard. It's it, it's hard to get away from it. And you know, I I, I mean, my understanding of paper straws, other than the fact that they kind of suck, um, they do. I know. It's such I a mean, milkshake. So I think there's the thing. I mean, it's the happy floss. It, it is coated in like a cassava resin, so it is water resistant. Mm -hmm. But if it's sitting in a in a puddle of water on the sink, it's going to get mushy. So they're not perfect, but I mean, it's a mindset shift. And they yeah, may not be forever. It's a one and done. It's yeah, a one and done thing. It's not like I'm like, it's not like a toothbrush. 
it's not a toothbrush where I'm sitting it like, you know, it's sitting there and I'm using it and using it and using it. And then like every, you know, like as if my toothbrush was a paper straw by like halfway through my first brush, I'm like, wow, this is already starting to bend by like the second one. It's like, Oh God. And the third one, it's like, I, this is just trash now. Like I, I yeah. can't even, it's like, it's not. No, most people can floss with them for about three rounds of flossing your whole mouth. Uh, it depends. How much more do you really need? Well, I like... know. I know. And then, so I will say, because someone's out there going, well, why don't you just use string floss? Or why don't you just use a floss? Because that has plastic too. Water flosser. That has plastic too. <laughs> and it's petroleum based, unless it's silk. Teflon? Which is the thing. Yeah. Yeah, here's that's not thing. that's not great either. Black water. You watch black water. Really? But here's the thing. <laughs> that might work for you and you can do string floss. That's wonderful. Not everyone can. First of all, mm. parents of young children, I absolutely want them flossing. Cavities are the number one chronic disease in children globally. So much so they become normalized. Where do we see them a majority of the time between the back molars? Kids mm. get cavities. It's not from not brushing. It's from not flossing. I'm very passionate about this. If you have a three-year-old or a four-year-old and you're trying to floss their molars with string floss, good luck. It's not going to happen. You have to use the floss picks. And every pediatric dentist on this planet will agree. Now, also special needs kids, you can get string floss in their mouth. Floss picks work better. There's also patients who physically have huge hands they have oral aversion, so they're orally sensitive. Kids with autism and sensory disorders, um, people with arthritis. Like, so when people, you know, I've had people at me, like, why don't you just, why are you going through all this effort? Just string floss. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit um, narrow-minded, I think, and you're just thinking about what works for you. But many, many people use floss picks. I mean, again, it is going to be an eight, million dollar industry clearly people are buying prospects um and if we're throwing away 4.7 billion a year in north america i mean imagine the impact of that yeah well the impact of just making them a lot let alone throwing them out you know oh, like yeah and shipping them from china which is where a lot of them come from including a lot of these bioplastic flossers I mean, absolutely, you know, so. Yeah, I I know, I know. It's, it's going to happen. Happy Floss is going to happen. I know it is. It I is. I don't know how, it, what way. It's, it, it is going to happen. Um, and I think be, because I think that we have, there's a lot of things that are like people are not willing to give up on um, mm -hmm. or up on easily. I know like driving, you know, I have a, a Tesla, so everybody's like oh how do you live with show. without a gas car like well yeah. i have i i had a chevy ev a chevy bolt before that until it, the fatter battery was gonna like you know catch on fire and explode or whatever yeah, yeah. so so i got them to buy it back they took it yeah. back and, and i was like all right cool i'm getting the car i should have got back then but hey i got a car for free for like three years so like is it really that bad no, no. not really um you know and and it's just it's a mind shift change of like well how you know uh, just understanding like the the impact that what you do does have an impact and yeah everybody's got to get on board in every little way floss mm -hmm. picks are one way um but even any like any single use anything every time i throw something out i'm like mm -hmm. ah, oh man like this this sucks like i don't i, I don't like it know. hurts Thank you. I haven't. I can't do zero trash. My a good friend of mine, no. two friends of mine in Australia. They're like, we're going zero trash. And then the pandemic happened, and they were like, we're going to do this after the pandemic because they were locked I mean, down truly, forever. When you see those accounts that do that, and they're like, this was my trash for the year, and it's in this little mason jar. I mean, how with kids and things? It's so impressive. I mean, but listen, is. eight billion people on the planet. If we all just did a couple small things, floss picks, for example, not a big deal. You know, if you're going to Starbucks, grab a paper straw six out of the 10 times that you go. It doesn't have to be every time. You have a thick milkshake. Okay, go with plastic. Yeah. It's just little shifts. Don't take the plastic lid to your coffee. Carry it open.
Well, they have that they have that sipper lid, but of course that's yeah. plastic too. So yeah. I, the, the, you know, the the whole thing. I I walked into um, we have a place called Royal Farms here, and right on the front side, like oh, we're we're getting past plastic. It's like the signs, like right as you're walking in the door, you walk in the door, ding. The first thing in is facing that faced at you is sandwiches wrapped in plastic, and I'm mm. like. What the, what are we doing here? Like, why is this, what's the point of the sign at that point? Like, totally, and not so that has so many impacts not only to our environment. Where does it go? To your point, what did it take to create that yeah. and to mine the petroleum to make it? But then also, it's touching your food. I mean, again, microplastic exposure. I think we're at the point. This isn't up for debate. You're not woo woo about this these are legitimate research studies coming out about the concerns with microplastics and finding microplastic in human blood and what are the long-term effects of that we don't fully understand that we don't and yeah it's concerning it's kind of i don't know if ironic is the right word but it's kind of funny that like the thing that might get um the fossil you know the big seven fossil fuel companies in the end isn't burning the 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 oil like to create electricity or our cars or any of that it might literally just be the illness that is is right all around us in plastics and and plastics are incredible and i you know to a certain extent i think that we you know need we need plastics long-term plastics single-use plastics i i think that we just I, yeah, it makes life. I mean, this pen has plastic on it, right? So yeah. like, it's a thing, but it, I'm not throwing this pen out after writing with it one but time. But then or... this one is made of cardboard. Ah. So, we, so it's just less, right? So this is plastic, this is plastic, and I'm sure there's plastic in the less. middle. But it's just a little bit less. So this but, has. But is it ultra fine pointed? I can't. No. That's not. that's the thing. This is a point, <laughs> point three eight is what Mine's I like to write shift. with. Joe, mindset shift. I I know, but my writing is so tiny that well, I need is, that. Are you? So in, this I is can't your. You can do this startup. You can create a sustainable pen. Fine point. That that's ultra. Yeah, ultra fine point. And I bet or, the manufacturing will be a lot easier for you than it's going to be for me. So. Pro- probably because it's not going to my mouth. Well, I mean, yeah. some people like to do the to to uh, um thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. So with. <laughs> Did you have a I did you have a watch party? It's so funny. So we were in Palm Springs. It was spring break. And um it showed on the East Coast first. And I grew up in New England. So all of my friends in Maine were having like a watch party there. And I was just with my kids at that point. I can't even remember. My husband was like playing tennis. I don't know. So I was gonna have a Pacific standard time watch party but my friends on the east coast facetimed me in to watch it so i was watching it with my kids and i of course was mortified (laughs) because i knew how it went down but i didn't know how they were going to edit it and i will tell you i didn't love the way it was edited i mean it was worse than what i it was worse to watch it than it was to live it so at that point i kind of texted everyone and I said, Hey, party's off. (laughs) And I just hung out with my kids. We like swam in the pool and I just processed it all. (laughs) I was like, I don't need to watch that again. I need to sit with this for a minute. Mm. I know. But then the tech started pouring in and everybody was very team Stacy and like, they're jerks. Kevin doesn't know what he's talking about. Mark, Mark Cuban is, you know, what a chauvinist, elitist, misogynist, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> so anyway, not that I think any of that's true, but they were making me feel better. So it was yeah, hey, you know, you know, I would like to think that none of that is true, regardless of no, his I don't think not very good take there. there. It's not a good take. And we've seen it. I think that's the, that's the weird thing. And, and when you talked about, it, you know, jumping the shark. Um, when I go back and do these old episodes of Shark Tank, like season six and back, mm-hmm. they are really like really ruthless in a lot of those episodes. They're just yeah. tearing up people. And I wonder, like, I get that 
it's kind of part of the show and they're they've gotten softer over the yeah. years right they've gotten old and and soft uh softer but i don't know like it, I, like i get that it made grit for great tv you make the money and all but like what you i mean i mean they know that there's a um a therapist after the show right like after you walk off the stage so like <laughs> They didn't just get the therapist you know that like a, in season you know ten and forward. A therapist. Yeah, oh yeah. Of I was so pissed. Sorry if you need to bleep that out. I'm not going to. It's I walked into the green room and in comes the therapist. And you know, I felt the the benefit I had is this wasn't my everything, right? This is a side passion project. I still have my office to go back to. That's my income. I have all these other projects going on. So it wasn't, I wasn't really devastated. I was more, honestly, I was really, I was offended. That, that's really how I felt. I felt offended. Um, and so the therapist walked in and I was just, I probably, I probably was not super kind. I just kind of said, like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I know what's going on here. I understand all of it. Thank you for reaching out, but I'm good. I just want to get out of here. Um, which I actually think is really nice though that they offer that service. I was really impressed that they have that. So, um. yeah, I mean, it's probably more for their protection than oh, I'm sure. your I'm protection. Sure. I mean, not that they don't care and won't do their thing. I mean, look, you pay a therapist to listen to you, right? So like there's already incentive there to listen and do the thing, but yeah. I'll just say ABC is Definitely dotting every I and crossing every T when it comes to their protection. So, yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about ABC in that regard. They have it pretty dialed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, were you scared to go back to the office after this? Because this happened on a Friday. Uh, like, I don't know if you did Saturday or did you... <laughs> what day did I do? Uh, I think it was midweek. I had to cancel patients. I had to cancel two full days of patients. Sorry, patients. Because they tell you so last minute. And like I was mentioning uh, uh, earlier when we were talking off camera, um, I book out six or seven or eight months ahead. Think about when you go to your dentist, you leave and then you're like, oh, yeah, I need to book my six month cleaning. My schedule is filled with patients six, seven, eight months from now. So yeah, they 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 don't give you a lot of notice. Um, I don't really remember. I, I texted people, you know, you can't, you're not supposed to say a lot, um, based on some of the, the NDAs and things that you sign, but I just texted people and I said, it didn't go quite, obviously I shared with my husband, but it, to everyone else, I just said, it didn't go quite as I expected. You know, I'll share details soon. And my team was very supportive and they like, applauded me when I walked in the next day and were like, we love you, Dr. Stacy, you know, boss girl, all that stuff. So I will tell you the cutest part though, it's still happening, which is weird. I don't know why people are still seeing it because it aired in on March 31st. My patients, my little cute kid patients, they come in and they're like, oh, we saw you on TV. So, I mean, it's really sweet. Because well, think... you book out. You book at six months out, so they haven't been there. Yeah, yeah. But people, but my the kids that come to my office have seen the episode now. And so they're coming in just saying, like, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're booking. Yeah, because yeah, you're just seeing them yes, for the first yes. time in six months. Yes, and it's just really sweet. They so think you probably I'm have that for a little so, while. They think I'm so cool. <laughs> and, then, uh, you are. and then this other dad who's a high school um, teacher, I can't remember what he teaches. He might teach marketing or something. He said it was the end of the school year and he was playing Shark Tank and he was like grading papers and he heard my voice come on because the kids were just watching it. And he looked up and he was like, oh my gosh, that's Stacy. Like what is happening? So that it's cool when they come in and share stories like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I've I've heard lots of stories where people come out of the woodwork. They they're like, you know, I didn't know any of these people watched. I haven't talked to these people in years, and I'm getting text messages from them. Oh, oh, you know, and I didn't tell sure them that, that to that watch happened. or anything. They just they that, came across it. They were happy yeah, to be watching. I'm generally not on Facebook very much. I'm on Instagram and 
head down shame TikTok a little bit. Uh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've had like a lot of friends from elementary school and middle school from Maine who I haven't spoken to since I was 13 years old. Uh, reaching out on Facebook saying, we saw you on Shark Tank. So I guess, you know, people are watching the show. So that's good. Good job, sharks. You're keeping it real. Real something. <laughs> it's all right. Everything, I mean, not to get too sappy, but I do think everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, it's going to be fine. It was a great experience. I learned a lot through it. Would I have done it? A little differently absolutely i would have i still would have done it though and honestly i still might have gotten a very similar outcome um I, i'm not sure they would have invested in it it's it's like it's again it's a prototype so they have to really believe in the message and the meaning and i think i was hoping for that more especially i think that's why i picked mark cuban because of what he's doing with his pharmaceutical mm company i was like oh so he wants to change the world he's thinking big picture uh you know i don't know i don't know but it uh i think the outcome probably would have been the same they maybe could have just been a little bit nicer to me yeah yeah i mean well i i also wonder like now that you're you're now that, like i'm thinking about it um i wonder if you know in the back of mark's mind he's thinking like man for like three hundred thousand dollars i could just probably get someone to make it myself oh i'm sure you yeah. know what i mean like they're or, or four hundred thousand or five hundred thousand like whatever it costs like i'll own a hundred percent of it instead of i mean this is where to his point i maybe don't have business shops in the sense that to me life isn't all about roi and like cat you know the money we make i i was just hoping maybe someone would be like you know I'm a billionaire. She seems nice. I like this idea. Let me just give her a deal on camera and then I'll get her pitch deck in the details post production and in due diligence. I I was clearly mistaken with those ideas, but uh you know, I still I think if people watch, I think the message was good for people that maybe don't understand the importance of flossing or they didn't realize the impact that plastic flossers have on the environment and physical health. I mean, to me, I'm an educator at the end of the day, and that ultimately is a huge win for me just to get humans healthier and to help get our planet healthier. So it's not all about the product. It's not all about making money and, you know, profits and, and all of that. It's, it's actually not what drives me whatsoever and so he probably sensed that uh and you know he was right i i have to be honest when i think about all the things that were said to me the, a lot of them they were right i mean they 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 read me pretty quickly who i was and it just wasn't someone they were interested in partnering with and that's okay i don't really know if i'd want to partner with them either so it's okay a foul well like you said wins. Uh, you know everything happens for a reason and uh yeah i, I still think it, it you know could have been nicer and maybe maybe in their mind they were being nice in the way that they delivered it it's just with the way it ends up being edited it it comes off kind of short and kind of like oh you said yeah. like your your three paragraphs worth of stuff and now we're just ready to just dismiss you like just just go you know um and and, yeah. and part of that's also I like mean, it's consecutive like boom out 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 something something nice it's nice for, nice that out. Was for sure. like, that was for sure how it was edited i mean i'm not gonna lie they the 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 uh energy in the room was not positive <laughs> mm. uh they were hard on me especially i would say kevin and mark were um not very pleasant but i will say um it, it's edited in a way to fill a space the producers have a space to fill i was the segment that is not the feel good it's sort of the shaming one and like why is she here get off the stage type of thing um but you know i am bummed that they edited out a lot of answers that would have been helpful for the viewers and um they edit you know you might get asked one question but it kind of gets edited with a reaction or a response to another question yeah 
there's a lot of that that's happening. So when I watched it, I was I was a little confused, but then I realized, oh, this is this is a show. It it is it is. I uh, Dr. Stacy, what was your childhood dream growing up? <gasps> my childhood dream when I was very little, I wanted to be a ballerina, and my name was Stacy Ballerina Hunton. <laughs> um, but interestingly enough, <laughs> that was my maiden name. Uh, I've always been into the environment. I was a big Al Gore fan, and I did so many projects on um, the environment and the ozone layer and things of that nature. My mom was a bit of a we we grew up in rural Maine, so we were a little you know shop at the co-op and little hippy dippy, if you will, um, in the best possible way. Um, yeah, I think my dad. My parents owned a small business. They owned a small convenience store in rural Maine. Um, and they really emphasized giving back to the community to the point of fall where they gave away far more than they should have. But um, he really instilled in me the importance of changing the world and just putting your good into the world. And so that is why I probably went into dental slash healthcare is to just help other people. I I love it and and here you are doing uh, the work to to make it happen uh, to, for the environment and yeah the Al Gore thing I actually just recently it might sound weird I might have just recently watched an Inconvenient Truth and then the second one um, I had not watched it um, I mean I knew all about like the, the gist and, and all that stuff I just had never actually sat down and watched it and and I've you know pretty much watched documentaries outside of when I watch movies is documentaries so I was like ah you know like. It's been, you know, it's been long enough. Like, let's watch it and see what, like, what came true all these years later. And like, wow, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's at a slower oh, project trajectory, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's still, it's still pretty much ringing, ringing true. Um, I should watch it again. I can't remember the book he wrote. I was in seventh grade and I did my seventh grade science project on the book he wrote, hmm. what was it called? It doesn't matter. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not it would sure. have been the early ni 90s ish or something. Anyway, um, you should watch yeah, it. So it's, 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 like it's very fascinating I to see watch how it, it worked out. Um, it's so, but it's really sad too. It's hard to think about. It's hard to, it's almost like you know too much. And then I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I just hope, you know, maybe someone will watch your show, Joe, and reach out to me. That would be wonderful. If yeah. you're interested in manufacturing or investing or talking IP strategies with me, I'm always open ears to all ideas. And I really do mean this. I just want the product made and created and available. That is, that's a win for me. So uh, figure it out after. Yeah. No, I, well, hey, if tech companies can say, let's burn a couple billion dollars in making something big. And then we'll figure out how to make money later. Uh, you know, why not something that actually helps the environment in the in teeth and people uh, in the process, yeah. not just on the microplastic side, but the energy use side, uh, you know, and the the um, uh, the cavity side, as well as the the, mm -hmm. the you know burning of fossil fuel or ma manufacturing of fossil fuels into plastics and such. Um, yeah. How can, uh, oh, well, actually, actually, I forgot to mention, you know, so you, and I should have mentioned this, but we got wrapped up in things. So when, when you were saying like, where's the show for the, uh, the underdog scrappy startup, it's, it's right here. Yeah. It's, it's right. I, I, yeah. I don't know if you know this, we Thank have you. the, uh, the super tank. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm actively looking for invest investments to be invest or yeah, to invest into, uh, here in, uh, with the ad cool. revenue that's supported through this channel. So, uh, oh, if, that's really if anybody's interested, it's super tank TV. I have, I got to do an update uh, people have been asking. I've gotten a handful of them. Um, I got to make a video about it. I haven't had time to sit down and make the video about it. Um, I get it. <laughs> because none of, well, not none of them are invest, investable, but so, they're not, all, all of them aren't fully baked enough to like warrant the five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar investment. And that's where we're, that's where I'm at, like ten thousand to fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. I'm not looking to take over the business, but you know, I want to help and and I want to be able to uh, you know, inject my expertise into it uh as well as, you know, have a have a 
a portion of that for for my time. Sure, uh, of course. But yeah, so well, so yeah, try. so that's that's where it is. It's right here. Um, and yeah. how can people get in touch with you, Stacy? Yeah, you can get in touch with me. Um, I have a, a website. It's Stacy at drstacy.com. Oh, I pulled um, out the wrong is, one. Oh, well, that's okay. That's my Happy Floss website. You can also get in touch with me there. Um, my my Stacy, it's S T A C I at D O C T O R S T A C I dot com. My office in Portland is NOPO Kids Dentistry. That stands for North Portland, N O P O. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'm working on my YouTube Shorts channel. Um, it's Doctor underscore Stacy, D O C T O R underscore Stacy. Um, if anyone knows Richard Branson, please send him my way. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I would love to hear from you. And I ac am accepting all advice and strategies and, you know, criticisms, all of it. I'm very open ears and uh, I appreciate being on. Thanks, Joe. That's me. Oh, you are so, so welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time here today uh, to be with us and, and to share all of your experience and, and everything. So uh, you're always welcome to come back when you have updates. If you got that update come at the, in the fall, feel free to come back. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be cool. I would yeah, love that. I'd love, love to have you. Love to have you cool. on, Stacey. Then I'll have sales. Yay. Yeah, yay. <laughs> well, you know, somebody somebody Major somewhere sales. will be happy, uh, <laughs> I think, with the name Mr. Wonderful or something like that. Uh, not that sales aren't important, but hey, you know, for, this is coming from a guy who wrote the, the book on sales won't save your business. So Awesome. Because they won't. Right on. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. If you haven't watched Dr. Stacy's pitch, I know she wasn't going to want to go watch it again, but if you haven't seen it, go click on up here. If not, I'll see you in the video down below. Take care and Kobe super.